Look, I realize that not everyone is gonna love Snake Eyes. I loved it. It's now, in fact, my favorite movie of the year. Unseating A Quiet Place 2, which are both fascinatingly paramount movies. I'd say my favorite show of the year so far is Loki. And Loki and Snake Eyes actually have a surprising lot of similarities in terms of tone. So if you're wondering what kind of stuff I like, it's, it's Snake Eyes and Loki. <laughs> Wow, I liked, I liked both of those so much. And I'm interested to see the way that the, this, this movie, Snake Eyes, breaks in terms of public opinion. Because it doesn't have, you know, the Marvel fandom to back it up. It's new. And it unfortunately has some pretty bad movies before it weighing it down. And I also think that there are no big stars in the film, uh, although I see plenty of candidates for future stars here, to really help pull in some fans. So I think the movie's right on the edge of which way it's gonna go in terms of the overall public perception. I think basically, if you think the trailer looks good, as I did, you might recall my reactions. I was so, so impressed. I was even more impressed when I saw the movie. I think you'll really like this film as I did. If you aren't sure how you feel about the trailer, I've seen some of you on the fence. I think if you're able to retain that open-mindedness, I think you'll probably like this movie. But if you thought the trailers looked stupid, and if you feel you need to trash this movie in defense of Sean Chi, which is silly because they can both be good, and hey, if Snake Eyes is better, it's not the end of the world, well, if you're one of those, you're probably gonna trash this movie because that's just what you've decided. And I, but I, you know, I have to say, I really wish that you wouldn't trash it. You could not like it, but I'd really ask you not to trash it because the fact that Hollywood made this movie is incredible to me. I feel that this is to Asian audiences what Black Panther was to black audiences. I know that Sean chi is supposed to be that, and maybe it will be too. But Snake Eyes has an edge to it. Oh, I really loved The Edge, which not only as a DC fan, I love both Marvel, and you know, because Loki has that edge too. I really like Edge in my, in my material. So I loved The Edge here, not only because I'm partial to it, but because I also felt that it reminded me of the best Asian cinema, which makes Snake Eyes feel particularly authentic. And again, I can't believe Hollywood made this movie. I was also really, really surprised by how much they did not give away in the trailers. Don't worry, I'm not gonna give it away here. I was very careful because when I was watching the movie, I was so impressed with what they didn't give away that I was like, I better make sure I, not, I don't ruin this for anyone because it, was, it made such an impression on me being surprised in the theater. Uh, for instance, at one point when I was watching the movie, I actually said out loud, out loud, it was at a press screening and it wasn't that crowded and I did whisper it, but I actually said out loud to myself, what the heck? And then, and then I thought of a couple people, I can't wait to watch this. I'm going, I'm going again this weekend. And I'm like, this is gonna be so great. I was delighted, I was delighted. And I also wasn't prepared for the fantasy elements of the film. I was not prepared for that at all. From the beautiful storybook settings, what a forest, where is that? Uh, to some mythological elements that come into play. Now, I think some people might, say the fantasy elements are stupid, particularly if you're looking to trash this film, that's what you're gonna go with. But remember, please remember that this is based on a toy line. It's trying to sell new toys and it has to compete with other comic book movies out there like Sean Chi's, they're wearing bracelets over there. I don't see how you can be okay with that, but have a problem with the fantasy elements here. I, you know, and I'm, I think the bracelets, I've come to think they're very cool. I would like to buy some, as I've said in my reactions to Sean Chi. I felt that this movie took the fantasy elements so seriously, did them so well, and gave them an edge to match the rest of the film that they really worked. I liked them. Uh, the third act, though, I have to be fair, almost falls victim to the same trap that so many comic book movies almost fall into these days, and some do fall in, uh, and that's that in an effort to have this grand fight, everything gets murky. It's hard to follow. I'm not t just talking about the story, but also even the fight itself. It just kind of becomes like a blur. But luckily, that's not too long, and the characters are so strong at that point that when afterwards the film starts to set up next chapters for the franchise, there's one end credit scene, but they have a bunch of like little end credit scenes at the very end of the actual movie. It's very exciting, and you're like, oh, I wanna go down that road, I wanna go down that road, I hope you're making all these movies, and I really, I really hope they do. It's done very organically and very well. And I, I, I would love to see this franchise continue. Because yes, this is, this, this is in the world of G.I. Joe, but it's important to also remember that it's not a G.I. Joe movie. It's a Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow origin film. But if you're a G.I. Joe fan, you'll be pleased to know that the Joes, like Cobra, 
do cast a shadow over our story. And Cobra comes off much stronger thanks to a very vivacious performance by Ursula Cor Corbero. This is my first time seeing her. I know a number of you are fans. I can see why. She is fantastic. She, like much of the cast, is a perfect fit with her role. She leapt off the screen, loved her. However, the Joes come across weaker. They do name drop them a lot and they do do a lot to set them up. So that was cool, that was exciting. But the problem is, and it pains me to say this, but Samara Weaving is surprisingly bland as Scarlet, the only bad actor in the film. And I've never seen Weaving not pop on screen before. So I don't understand why she doesn't hear. It might be because Scarlet and Snake Eyes are a couple in the comics, but here it seems like they're setting up a romance for Snake Eyes with new character Akiko, who I liked quite a bit, uh, largely thanks to uh, Haruka Abe's performance and her very strong chemistry with Golding. And maybe the film, and I can understand this, didn't want to create a love triangle here, especially because they're working so hard for Asian representation. But I still think Scarlet could have, you know, been exciting in other ways. It just, it, I'm sorry, maybe it just was bad casting. Maybe it just, it just isn't a good fit for Samara Weaving, but it just did not work. Uh, and yes, while I understand that originally Snake Eyes was a, himself was a Caucasian character, really, Henry Golding is so good here, I don't see how anyone could have a problem with the character being changed this way. He's amazing. When Crazy Rich Asians came out, a friend of mine went to see it and said to me, Henry Golding is something special. This is a friend of mine who's very good at picking actors. And she was like, that guy's going to be a future movie star. And I was like, him? You know, like I thought he was good, but I didn't quite see it. But watching this movie, after I went to the press screen, I actually called that friend up and I was like, you were right, he's a movie star. And she was like, I told you. I mean, again, I've enjoyed him in the, I've seen his, I thought he was good in The Gentleman. He was good in Last Christmas. But this, this is like his big movie star breakout performance. His snake eyes is a charming rogue. Uh, and that's all I'll say because I don't want to ruin the movie. His performance actually reminded me a lot of Hugh Jackman starting out as Wolverine. I thought it was that the potential to be that iconic. And I hope that, I hope that it works out for him because he's so good. And Andrew Koji is a perfect partner slash foil for Golding as they both complement and contrast each other quite nicely as Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow are supposed to do. From their looks to their physicality, the physicality of their performances and their fighting styles to their personalities. They really do feel like two sides of the same coin or yin and yang, right down to their, to their costumes, so good. In the course of a single film, I feel that both Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow, two characters, are perfectly established from their very complex relationship with each other to what drives them both individually. That's impressive. As for the rest of the cast, it's always a joy to see Iko Uwais, who of course is famous for the Raid movies. You should be familiar with the Raid. If you're not, go watch them immediately. And we've been wanting to see him get more work for a long time. It's taking a long time, but this is a really great opportunity for him. And he does a great job. Uh, and Peter Mensah uh, also joins him as Snake Eyes' uh, two major teachers. And they're both very well cast. They just, as soon as they come on screen, you're like, oh, I'm ready to learn. And that's what's so cool about those scenes. You get to go to ninja school. I was like, man, if only Paramount had theme parks, I would love a Snake Eyes ride. Uh, a restaurant, they could build a whole Snake Eyes land. I mean, the movie really, really sets it up for that. And I would love to go and have these experiences. I mean, it was really cool. It was just so great. And I thought some of the lessons that they taught were actually very valuable. So pay attention in ninja school. And Takahiro Hira does a fabulous job as a menacing presence on the sidelines. And again, that's all I'll say, because I don't want to give anything away. Overall, in addition to its amazing cast, what also impresses me about Snake Eyes is its scope. From how much story it's able to tell, so much happens in this movie. And the movie is also quite clever. At one point, I realized that Snake Eyes was doing something sneaky. And I was so impressed, I was blown away with how slick he was. I actually laughed out loud. I mean, I really interacted with this movie. I actually laughed out loud when I realized what he was up to. I was like, oh, Snake Eyes, you're so great. And then also all the world building it accomplishes. As I said, where's my theme park? I really, really love being in the world of Snake Eyes, which is important for any franchise. I hope that they can do as good a job establishing the world of G.I. Joe and Cobra because this, it, it's got to compete with this place, which is pretty amazing. The film, on that note, is also visually stunning, from incredible set pieces to action sequences that take place within them. Although even sometimes when Snake Eyes walks across the room, you're like, wow, that's fantastic. It was just really cool. And I, again, really loved that forest. It was incredible. 
Finally, the film's respect for Asia and Asians is wonderful to behold. Every single character is cool, from our leads to supporting to even the guys who work in the garage. That was a great little moment. I thought that was great. When Snake Eyes goes to borrow a motorcycle, I was like, that's just perfect. And Tokyo, and Tokyo, Japan, uh, overall, so Tokyo, the main city, and then Japan overall, and the way of its clans, ninja. I know it's a ninja clan, but you know, uh, the Yakuza. Uh, basically, just the overall traditions and history of Japan, in past, past and present, are not only respected, but celebrated. And again, it's incredibly exciting to see that Hollywood did that, especially after so many times that Hollywood has done that poorly. So for them to finally get it right, uh, was just wonderful. I, I got to interview Andrew Koji, and he talked about how they, uh, not only is uh, director Robert Schwenke a fan of Japanese cinema and Asian cinema overall, but that they worked very hard to collaborate with uh, film industry professionals in Japan uh, to, to try and make sure that it felt very authentic. And I think that that shows very much so in the movie itself. So that's my non-spoiler review of Snake Eyes, which I can't wait to see again this weekend in IMAX. I had to go to the press, ju uh, the, the press junket screening, which wasn't in IMAX. Uh, the the all-media screening was in IMAX, but I, had, I couldn't see it in IMAX the first time, and I, I was a little bummed, but it was still amazing. But I can't wait to see it on a really big premium screen. All right, so that's my review. Share your thoughts down below. Subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now. 